Greetings, folks, and welcome. A very common application of statistical inference is using information from a sample to estimate a population proportion. And when we do this, we have to put a confidence interval around the proportion that we estimate from our sample. When we do a confidence interval, we often use a confidence level like 99, 95, maybe 90%. A 99% confidence level means it will be 99% certain that the confidence interval that we calculate will include the true population proportion, where say a 90% confidence level means that we're only 90% certain that the confidence interval that we calculate will include the true population proportion. So if we want to be more certain that the interval that we calculate includes a true population proportion, we need a larger interval. The first part of the margin of error is a z-score that corresponds with the confidence level that we set. So there are three steps to finding that z-score. The first step is to decide on the confidence level. Again, we can do a 99, 95, 90%. And we take 1 minus that confidence level that we set, and that's equal to alpha. So let's say we're doing a 90% confidence interval. Alpha is 0.10. Then we calculate alpha divided by 2. So say for a 90% confidence interval, it's 0.1 divided by 2, which is 0.05. Then we find the z-score that corresponds with alpha divided by 2. So to do that, we go to our standard normal distribution table. So let's do an example. Suppose we want to calculate a 90% confidence interval for the percentage of people who support Todd Gabe for president. So to do this, let's say we'll take a random sample of 100 people and from that random sample, we find that 60% of those people do support Todd Gabe for president. So that would be a sample proportion of 60% of those that we surveyed. So for our margin of error, we'll use a 90% confidence level. So that determines the z-score. So here are the three steps. We first calculate alpha, which is 1 minus 0 0.9, which is 0 0.10. Then we divide that alpha by 2. So that's 0 0.05. So then we'll go to our z table to find the z score that corresponds with 5% of the standard normal distribution. Here's the standard normal curve. It's symmetric, single peaked, and bell shaped. Of course, it's centered by, by 0. So I put in a 5% in the right tail and the 5% in the left tail. Of course, I put question marks because we don't know the z score yet that corresponds with the top 5 and bottom 5% of the distribution. So then we've got 90% of the center of the distribution is what we're capturing here for our confidence interval. And I also put a note that when we go to the Z table, we'll actually be looking for the value 0.95 if we're interested in the upper part of the distribution. And that's because the standard normal distribution table shows you cumulative percentages. So if you're looking for the top 5% of the curve, you're really looking for the value of 0.95 when we go to look at our Z table. So here's our standard normal table. Again, it shows cumulative values. So we're looking for 0.95. Um, if you look down that first column, you see Z scores of 1, 1.1, 1.2, all the way down to 2. If you look across that top row, you see a value of 0, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, all the way out to 0 0.09. So now we're going to look in the table for 95%. And unfortunately, we can't find exactly 95%. We find a value of 0 0.9495. And then next to it, we see a value of 0 0.9505. So really, that 95% is sort of splitting that in half. So the z-score could be 1.64. Again, that's the z-score that corresponds with 94.95% of the distribution. And the z-score of 1.65 corresponds with 95.05. So again, we might just use a value of 1.645 because that sort of splits that right in the middle. So here we go back to the standard normal curve. We can take what was once question marks and actually put in Z values here. So you see the value of 1.645 corresponds with the top 5% of the distribution. And the bottom 5% of the distribution has a Z score of minus 1.645. We know that because the standard normal curve is symmetric. We pretty much have all the information that we need now to calculate our confidence interval for the percentage of all Americans that support Todd Gabe for president equals our sample proportion which is 60%, 
plus or minus 1.645. That's the z-score based on the confidence level we set. Again, we, we're doing this as a 90% confidence interval. You multiply that by the standard error of the sampling distribution, which is the square root of 0.6 times 1 minus 0.6 divided by that sample size of 100. Again, we take the square root of all that. So after we're doing our calculations, we see that the percentage of all Americans who support Todd gave for president equals 60% plus or minus about 8%. It's actually 0 0.0806, which gives you a confidence interval of 52 to 68%. Again, that's a 90% confidence interval. So we can say that we are 90% confident that between 52 and 68 percent of Americans support Todd Gabe for president. And I th thank you for your support.